Hi everyone and welcome to example one on page 29 of the workbook. And this is our first problem of trying to actually find the area between two specific curves, y equals the square root of x and y equals x squared over eight. Okay, so it always helps on a problem like this to have a picture to start out with. Um, so I wanna just draw a very rough picture first. Let's think about what these two curves look like. Okay, so y equals the square root of x. You might remember that that sort of has this type of a shape to it. Okay, and if you don't remember that, that's okay. You can always pull out a pocket calculator or maybe a graphing app and, and have it plot a picture for you. And same is true for x squared over eight. That's actually an upward shaping, shaped parabola. It kind of has this sort of a shape to it. And now that we've drawn those two curves, can you see the area that they're talking about? They want the area that's between those two curves, okay, that's bounded. So we must be talking about this area here. Okay, now that we've sort of nailed it down, I'd like to just draw a smaller picture of that that's a little bit more zoomed in, okay? So I'm gonna erase what we do, drew and just redraw this picture again to kind of just show the part that we're interested in. Okay, so basically, we discovered that the part that was between these two curves kind of had that sort of a shape to it. Okay, up here was the square root of x, and down here was x squared over 8. Okay, so how do we find that area? Well, we sort of derived a formula to, to, to do this above. I want to sneak a peek at that again. Okay, it looked like this. And one thing about this formula, I don't know if we mentioned it in the derivation that we did, but what was special about f and g was that f was on the top and g was on the bottom. Okay, so in a problem like this, when you're finding area, you're going to go in that order, right? So kind of using that idea, our, the area that we're looking for should look like the integral of the curve that's on the top, that's going to be the square root of x in our case, minus the curve on the bottom, x squared over 8. Okay, but there's one thing missing from our integral here. Do you, do you see it? Remember, to get an area, we want to get a number for this integral. What's missing from our integral are limits of integration. Where do we start and where do we stop? There and there. Okay, well, let's go to our picture. So on our picture, we're really talking about the point here to the left and the point here to the right. We need to know what those two x values are to get farther on the problem. Okay, how do you do that algebraically? Okay, notice that those two points are the places where these two curves cross each other. How do you find the crossing points of two curves? Okay, well, points of intersection you can generally get by just setting the two curves equal to each other. All right, so I'm going to do that up here. Okay, so the square root of x is equal to x squared over 8. We want to solve that equation for x. All right, so why don't we first square both sides to get rid of that square root. So on the left, we're going to get x, and over on the right, if we square that whole fraction, we're going to get x to the fourth over 64. Okay, and continuing with this calculation, maybe multiply both sides by 64. Okay, and then move up here. So we've got 64x equals x to the fourth. In this type of a situation, you generally get everything on one side of the equation. I'm going to subtract 64x, because if you do that, then you can think about factoring. So x to the fourth minus 64x, notice that those two terms both have an x in common, so we'll pull an x out there. And that allows us to essentially break this equation into two parts. If x times x cubed minus 64 equals zero, then either x has to equal zero or x cubed minus 64 has to equal zero. Kind of splits the equation into two parts. Okay, and so we've got one solution already, x equals 0, and we'll go ahead and solve the other one by adding 64 to both sides. How do you solve an equation of the form x cubed equals 64? 
Well, we, we need to get rid of the cubed, so we're just going to take the cube root of both sides, and we'll get x equals the cube root of 64, okay, which just happens to be the, a nice number, 4. All right, so what we've managed to figure out then is that our two points of intersection, x equals 0, you might have been able to guess that one graphically. You can see that it's right on the axis. And then over here, x equals 4, that's the other one. Okay, so that tells us then what our limits of integration need to be. Let's fill those in. So we've got a 0 and a 4, and we are ready to calculate this integral. Okay, so starting with the square root of x, I'm going to remind you that as a power, that's really just x to the 1 half. So to find an antiderivative there, we're just going to use the power rule. So we'll, we'll get x to the 3 halves over 3 halves, okay, because we need to add 1 to that exponent. So that's the same as 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. Okay, if we take an antiderivative of x squared over 8, we're going to get x cubed over 24, okay, because I'm skipping an algebra step there. There's, there's a 1 8, then we take the antiderivative of x squared, we get x cubed over 3, but then the 3 times the 8 gives us the 24. Okay, there's our antiderivative, and we want to just evaluate it between 4 and 0. Okay, so let's see. If we plug in our 4 for the upper limit, we're going to get 2 thirds times 4 to the 3 halves minus 4 cubed over 24. Okay, and then if you plug in 0 for the lower limit, you're just going to get 0 for both terms. Okay, and the rest is just calculating this and seeing what we, what we end up with here. So let's see, we're going to get 2 thirds, and then 4 to the 3 halves, that ends up being 8. Okay, and then 4 cubed over 24, let's see, that's going to be 64 over 24. So 2 thirds times 8 is 16 thirds minus. Then if we reduce 64 20 fourths, that's going to be, let's see, 8 thirds. Okay, and then finally 16 thirds minus 8 thirds is just going to give us 8 thirds. Okay, there's our answer. And that is the area between these two curves.